Hey, I'm Seth with Land the House. If you're interested in a queen size platform bed that is very sturdy and easy to build, stay tuned to the rest of this video. The first step in this build is to go to your local home improvement store or lumber yard and gather the materials required to build this bed frame. You're going to need eight 10 foot two by fours and two eight foot two by fours. Whenever you pick these out, be sure to look down the board to make sure that there's no twisting or warping going on. It will help out later if the board is as straight as possible. You're also going to need seven eight foot two by sixes. Do the same thing, look down and make sure there's no twisting or warping whenever you pick those out. Now here in my shop, I have got a miter saw that I'll be using to make my cuts. If you're at your local big box store, home improvement like Lowe's or Home Depot, you can actually have them make the cuts for you if you don't have a saw like this. Let's start off with our 10 foot two by fours. I'm gonna set these eight foot down here on my bench. These are gonna be used for the slats of the bed. Now you may be thinking, why don't we just use two sheets of plywood and make a solid base for the bed instead of using all of these two by fours. Keep in mind that mattresses need to breathe and so having these slats is important. Also, the reason I'm using this many slats is because I will have a mattress without box spring. So I have to have about two inch gap or less between each slat to stay in the warranty of the mattress. If you're gonna use box springs, then you could cut this number of slats in half. So instead of having 15, just use somewhere around seven and you'll be good to go. The reason I got 10 foot boards is because our cut needs to be 59 and three quarter inches, which means out of a 10 foot board, we can almost cut them in half to get the value we need. So I'm just going to take my tape measure here and measure out 59 inches and three quarter inch. Now, if you're gonna make these cuts yourself, please use safety glasses and also ear protection. These 10 foot boards are actually a little bit longer than 10 foot, which means you'll need to come back and cut the other side at 59 and three quarters to make sure that you have two equally sized pieces. Now that all 15 slats have been cut out of the two by fours, I've got this one last five foot piece left over and also the two eight foot two by fours. These are gonna be used for the legs. I'm going to be putting two of them together and it's gonna be a foot long with nine legs. So I need 18 one foot sections cut from these two by fours. Let's cut out one foot here. Now it's actually rather important that all of these be the same length. So what I'm gonna do is hold this block up onto the previous block and then use that as my saw guide. Let me show you how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna simply take this piece and set it here on my two by four and then I can use that to make sure my saw is always going to be there at the same length. Once it's in place, I can move this one out of the way and get this one cut. Now, if we did that right, we can match these up like this and then come over here to this end and see if they are correct. And they sure are. Now I have all 18 one foot two by fours cut that will make the nine legs. Now, if you're asking yourself, why would you need nine legs on this bed? So I have a metal legged version of this bed frame and I have several hundred people who have made that frame. Some of them are couples that each of them weigh over 500 pounds 
and they actually say that the bed is extremely strong even with uh, the two of them on the bed. So I just want to say that if you feel like you don't need this many legs, feel free to take out two or four of them, whatever you feel is necessary. But the bed with the metal legs and nine of them is strong enough to hold a thousand pounds. So just keep that in mind for uh, your own need. Now it's time to cut the sides of the bed using a two by six. I want this to be at 80 and a half inches long. So two at 80 and a half inches long. Now for the head and footboards, we want to cut a two by six at 63 and a half inches. The remaining three eight foot two by six, we want to cut down to 83 and a half inches. This is going to be used for underneath the bed to allow all of the slats and frame to come together. It's really what is the strength behind the bed. Now that all the cuts have been made, the next step is to pre-drill holes into the wood so that whenever screws are used to assemble the bed, it's not going to be cracking the wood. So let's go ahead and start with the runners. And I'm going to be using a drill with a drill bit that is slightly smaller than the screws I'm going to be using. I'm going to put two holes in the end of each board, coming back about three quarters of an inch. And on these runners, I'm going to come down every foot and a half or so and put another hole in so that it will attach to the sideboard later. I'm just coming out about three quarters of an inch on each one of these. Now for the middle runner, I'm just going to put the two holes in the end and not worry about going down one of the sides. Now for the header and footer boards, I'm going to pre-drill three holes on both sides of each of these to make sure I have plenty of attachment points. We're going to be using nine legs here. So I'm going to take the top of each leg and I'm going to put two pre-drill holes in each of these. So with the nine legs, you'll only need to put two out of each board here. So the bottom will just leave as is. Now lastly, I'm going to be screwing down all of the slats to make sure they don't come slipping out. And so on each one of these, I'm going to come down about three inches and then put a single pre-drill hole through here. And I'll also have to flip this around and get the other side as well. Now that holes have been pre-drilled in all of the slats, top and bottom, and all of the legs have at least two holes pre-drilled into them, and then also the front and back have three holes in each end. And then the three runners have two holes on the side. And then uh, along, let's see which one is the side. Oh, my bad, yeah. So, and also along the side of the two of them. And the middle one just has to have the ends. Now it's time to do some sanding. I'm going to be using a random orbital sander here. If you don't have one of these, you can just use a regular piece of sandpaper. You mostly want to knock off the burrs, but I'm also going to be hitting the faces that will be visible, as well as all of the edges, to make sure that it is nice and smooth and it's not going to be giving anybody splinters. This actually requires a lot of sanding, and so I'm going to just toss on a little dust mask here just to make sure I keep the dust out of my lungs. And then um, just for the fun of it, some safety glasses and some sound protection.
Now that all the boards have been sanded, I'm going to use this classic gray 271 stain. It is a nice, uh, very different kind of stain. Now I won't have to stain all areas, just the ones that will be visible. So for instance, this is the front of the bed here. So I will be staining it gray, but the back of this board does not need to be stained. Now that all of the cuts have been made, it's time to get the bed assembled. The first step is to put the two side rails and the foot and header all out but upside down, meaning that the unstained portion is facing up. We're going to go ahead and get these screwed in. If you'll remember, we pre-drilled three screw holes here on the footer and header, and that will be butted up against the side rails, and I'm going to use some three inch or three and a half inch screws to get this attached to the side rail. Now that all four corners have been tightened down with three screws each, it's time to put the support boards underneath. Now one of the boards is only stained on the ends, and that is going to be the board that goes here in the middle. The other two boards do have stain on one side, and so you're going to want to make sure that you have that uh, piece of stain facing the outside. So I'll put that one there. And then the last one I'm going to be putting over here. And then I'm going to be using some three inch screws to make sure this is cinched down very nicely. And I want my middle piece here to be in the middle. So I'm going to use a tape measure to find my middle point on both the foot and the head. So let's do that real quick. On the outside here is 63 and a half. Half of 63 and a half comes out to 31 and three quarters. So I'm just going to make a simple mark right here to say that is the middle point of this middle support here. Only two holes were pre-drilled into this board. So I'm gonna use two three inch screws, find my middle mark there and the middle mark of my board. And now I can just screw these into place. Now to get the two sides done, I'm simply going to place the board on the end and make sure that it is squared off. Now the end pieces I have pre-drilled and the rest of the inner pieces I'm just going to put a screw every two foot or so. The screws along the edge here just ensure that this is not going to be moving around anywhere. So every couple of feet I'm just going to put a screw, these are two and a half inch. This is what we have so far. We have the side rails installed on the head and footer boards. And then we have the three supports underneath. So this one has multiple screws along the side. This one only has the screws here in the center. And that has screws on the side as well. 
Now it's time to work with the legs. The legs are going to go on each corner and then in the middle as well. Now I like to put the leg back a couple of inches so it's not going to be a toe hitting hazard. And I also like to snug up against this edge so that it gives you a little bit more room not to hit your toe on this side. Now the legs have to be installed from the other side. So what we're going to do is measure and mark where we want the legs and then we're going to flip this up so that we can get some screws in from the other side. I like this area right here pretty good. Let's see what we're at. That's three and a half inches. Let's step it back so that we're right at three inches from the edge. And the other side shouldn't matter because it's going to be hugging this side here. So I like the three inch mark. I'm going to go ahead and just put a mark on the board so I'll know that that's where it needs to be whenever I screw this in from the other side. The full length of our frame here is 83 and a half inches. And so we're going to find 41 and three quarters to be our center point here for that middle leg on all three of these sections here. Now I'm going to flip the frame up so we can access those points to get our legs installed. The frame is a little bit heavy. If you feel like you need to, definitely get somebody else to help with this part. Let's go ahead and get this middle leg installed. So our three inch mark is right here. So that means this board is going to be in the middle at this point here. So I'm just going to take a three inch screw on the back side here and I'm going to be drilling that through here. So I'm going to go ahead and get it started. Now where we made these legs, these screws are here on the back. I'm going to put them back so they don't uh, show up from the outside here. If this happens where there's a gap, you can back it out just a little bit and then start over. Okay, I'm going to make sure I put a couple screws in to keep this in place. We are now finished with the wooden legs. Time to get this thing turned back onto its right side up. But as you can see, the middle legs I just spaced equally from one side to the other. And then the uh, side legs are then flushed up against the uh, edge there. Looking pretty good. Let's flip this down where it's supposed to be. The frame has been built pretty tall so that storage boxes can go up under here. This one has about uh, a foot or so of clearance. Now the next step is to go ahead and get the slats installed. Some people ask if you can use sheets of plywood as the slat and the answer is it doesn't really let enough airflow to your mattress. So that's one of the reasons that we use slats that can span this gap here and allow you to have airflow between the slats. For the header and footer, I'm going to put this first slat all the way up against the edge and use some of these two and a half inch screws to lock it into place where we had pre-drilled the holes before. Sink them far enough in that it's not going to be uh, catching on your mattress. We have 15 slats that are three and a half inch wide. They need to cover 80 and a half inches. So I am simply just going to make sure there is two inches of gap between each board. Now this is going to have box springs on it, which means this many slats is overkill. But if you were going to be using a mattress directly on this, then you would want to have uh, about this gap right here. And there we have it. The slats have been installed. One screw in each side and there is a gap of two inches. Now for a box springs you can probably get by with only five or six of these slats but if you're going to be placing your mattress directly on this frame then you're going to want that uh, spacing of two inches or less. So I believe we are now ready 
So you go ahead and put the mattress on there and it will be complete. I'm gonna have a separate video later of a headboard build and install. So definitely stay tuned for that. You may get by with only five legs, removing this center one here, this one here, over in that side and there as well. But I rather have the extra support just in case. I hope you've enjoyed this build video. If you're having doubts on whether or not you can make your own bed frame, go for it. This one is easier than it looks. The wooden legs allow you to use materials that are easily found at your big box stores. Now, if you would like to see this frame built with metal legs, I have a link to that video in the description down below. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe, and it would be very great if you would share this video on your social media pages. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.